Welcome back to another episode of the Pursuit of Profit pod. I'm here today with Oliver or Doll. Which one do you prefer? Let's call me Doll, it's probably easier. Call me Doll, yeah, cool. Call That's where we're going to start then. Where did the name Doll come from? So basically, it's a bit of a funny story to be fair. So one of my oldest friends, um, Danny, he's got a weird nickname as well. We call him Poop. Got a birthmark on the back of his head, like a white birthmark. <laughs> his dad, shout out Chris, Big Coz. He just come up with it one day, like, see where I'm quite like a emotional, bit of a fragile person, a bit like a doll. Yeah. He's just one day he was shouting at me and I got all a bit upset and he was like, oh, shut up, Dolly. <laughs> and like, so like, first of all, it was Dolly. And then basically we'll get into that later, but I wanted to get into property and I had no financial background or no credit or nothing. Yeah. So the same person, Chris, told me I need to go and sign on the doll. So it was like Dolly doll. So that's literally where it come from. Just kind of stuck from there. Yeah, okay. literally. And that was like when I was 16, 17. I've actually always wondered that. I've always meant to ask where did yeah. the, the name come from? Like I said, I'm quite like, emotional and quite fragile. Yeah, so are. like when he was shouting at me, I got a bit like, oh, <laughs> shut up, Dolly. So yeah, that's where it comes from. All right, and cool. then I was signing on Sign benefits. On the doll, and obviously yeah. old school Cockney people call it the doll. Right? Yeah. You're on the rock and roll, you're on the doll. So yeah, that Dolly doll, innit? That's where it come from. Okay, cool. Well, most people obviously know you as a jeweller. Obviously, you've gone yeah. viral on TikTok a few times. Yeah, yeah, getting spotted yeah. abroad and that now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, if you just take people back, your upbringing, you know, before you became a jeweller, because you only become a jeweller what four years ago, five no, years ago, two years. I've two, been taking it seriously, two years. Two years. Okay. Yeah, two so years. yeah, before that, if we take it way back, where did it all start? Where was you? What was your upbringing like? What did you do before um, watches? Yeah. So. I was brought up in, um, I was born and bred in a place called Tulse Hill, uh, like to make it easier for people like near Brixton. Mm -hmm. I was born and bred there. Um, upbringing, without exposing too much, you know, typical mixed race upbringing in it. Black, well, my dad's not even black, my dad's mixed race. Mm -hmm. So my dad's half Jamaican, half Jewish. Half uh, Jewish? Yeah, my dad's half Jewish. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. My mum's white. So yeah, when I mean like typical mixed race boy upbringing, your dad's not at home much, in and out of jail. Mm. Uh, didn't go without anything. I'm not gonna scream any poverty. I went on two, three holidays a year. Yeah, I wore TNs, had an Afrix, like got looked after. Yeah. And um, when I was 12, um, my dad come out of the walk for like fourth or fifth time, moved to Bromley in Kent, mm -hmm. burnt ash to be precise. I like to say Downham, but the man them told me I'm not from Downham. <laughs> my bins weren't blue, my bins were green. Yeah. I'm from BR1. Okay. So I moved to Bromley when I was 12. Yeah. And um, yeah, so basically that was my bringing moved to Bromley when I was 12. Um, school was never really for me. Um, where I was a bit of a shit, I don't know if I can swear or not, where I was a bit of a, a little shit in a uh, primary school. Uh, so my, my report wasn't very great. So I couldn't get into no secondary schools. And it's crazy. So we moved, when my dad moved to Bromley, the plan was for me to get a better education. None of the schools in Bromley would take me. Mm -hmm. So. Why? Cause I was just like a little, I was just like a little bad breed oh, in it. Okay. Like a little yeah, shit yeah. in school. Yeah. So some of the worst schools back in South London wouldn't take me. So like, for those who are from South London will know, I tried to get into like Dunraven, which is a good school. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't get in there. Um, and then the only two schools that would literally take me was Archbishop Tennyson's and Lillian Bailey's. People who went to Archbishop Tennyson's and Lillian Bailey's, God rest their soul, rather all dead, are all in prison. Huh. Mad school. So one school in Bromley basically said, do you know what? We'll give him a shot. Kelsey Park in Beckenham. I don't even know what it's called now. I think it's mm -hmm. like a Harris Academy or something. I think so, yeah. So I started school. I didn't get into a school till like the f halfway through year seven started school and I've always kind of had that like entrepreneur mentality. I'm not going to do the whole dream selling or where every person on a podcast says they were selling sweets in school and making money because I don't believe half of them, but I just knew school wasn't for me. It didn't make no sense. Me getting educated by someone who's got no readies. Mm -hmm. Like I said, where I come from off a decent background, my dad had a pound note, I see certain things. I was, you know, my dad was living a certain lifestyle. So I was living a certain lifestyle. And I thought my teacher's broke, like, yeah. how are you gonna teach me? Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. So I didn't get, and where I started so late, you know, like everyone has that whole inset day or you're, you're like, like, I don't know if it's true or not, but I'm assuming like, don't like year sevens have a, like a week in school when they're just by themselves. Yeah, and then the older kids yeah. come after. So yeah. where I 
missed all that. I wasn't aware of all that. So when I'm being told, oh, you're late, you're going to get a detention or you've got to go and do this, you've got to do that, ask to go to the toilet and all this. I know primary school, you've got to ask to go to the toilet mm -hmm. to get my drift. So like, it was all a bit of like a shock to me. Like, right, mate, who are you talking to? Like, yeah. What do you mean you're in my face? Shouting with coffee breath. Yeah. So I didn't last very long in school. I got kicked out. A lot. I basically went to school for a year. What, just year seven? Yeah, so basically halfway through year seven and I got kicked out at the end of year eight. So all that, like, mm. I didn't understand what picking your lessons was. I never got that chance to pick a lesson. Yeah. yeah. Um, I crack jokes about it now, actually, to be fair, because later down the line, people used to talk about business studies. So I didn't know what that was. Yeah. I'm like, what do you mean? And they're like, oh yeah, in school, you learn about how to open a business, how to open a limited company, how to become an entrepreneur. I'm like, oh cool, but does your teacher have a limited company? Is your teacher an entrepreneur? So you're learning about all these things. Why has that person gone and done it? How can I learn from someone who hasn't done this? Yeah. But long story cut short, yeah, school wasn't for me. Um, got kicked out. Yeah, like I said, end of year eight. My dad went back to the walk. So I moved back to Tulsa with my mum. And my mum sent me to this crazy centre. Bro, this centre was in Streatham once again. Half of them are dead, half of them are in prison. All I'd done in this centre was play table tennis, watch TV and listen to Roll Deep. Like, that's literally- Is that from year eight onwards? From year nine. From year nine. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you a funny story. So I've always kind of been into fashion, innit? Yeah. So like, imagine now I'm in the dungeon in South London. I've been in Bromley for a year, so I talk a bit different. Yeah. I um, don't really like the same things they like. And I'm in this school wearing like Pradas and Lacoste tracksuits. Yeah. Anyway, one of the older boys in the school put me under his wing. Thank God. His name was Moise from Ilford. The school was in Stratton, but he was from East. Mm. And I remember uh, he gave me this Aquamaster. Do you remember Technomarines Aquamaster watches? Mm -hmm. Oh, like old school. <laughs> I'll, I'll show you what I'll Google later. You're showing your age there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm showing my age. And basically yeah, he, he let me wear this kettle. Yeah, and yeah. I remember oh, one of the guys must have like kind of been onto me like, right, you wear Pradas, you got this watch. Yeah. yeah. Let me chat to you. You know, yeah, that, yeah. that sort of situation. I can't remember how, but I wore my, my, I wore my way out of having a conversation and them trying to move to me. Mm -hmm. So I've only at the school about two, three weeks at this point. Went back, to, went back home and I basically, I wrote a letter to my mum saying like, mum, I can't go to this school. I wear a watch, I wear Pradas, I'm the cool kid. They're all gonna like try and bully me. I've never been bullied. Like, I'm not having it. Yeah. Long story cut short, obviously a couple of days, obviously late, I've gone past. I'm back, I'm, obviously, I'm in this school. The teacher has basically said, oh, everyone sit down, we need to have a conversation. My mum has given the teacher the letter and the teacher has read this letter out in front of all these people. Oh, she violated. She violated. <laughs> um, I literally, I never forget, I literally remember tightening up my TNs after that letter was read and doing the dash, <laughs> yeah? And I never went back to that school again. And funny enough, I actually bumped into a couple of the people like years later and- uh, They bring it up. Yeah, we, we were cracking jokes about it to be fair. <laughs> And, uh, but yeah, free the guys who were in the jail house from that school and RIP to the ones that passed. No, 100%. So, so what year was that that you so left? Was that like year nine still? Yeah, 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 done, finished. Oh, done. Right. No so school. Was, you were there for a few months? Yeah, for a few, I was there for like three weeks. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, done. So then what you do after that? Nothing, bro. Nothing? No, I, yeah, like. No I, GCSEs or? No GCSEs. Obviously I can read and write. I'm yeah, there, yeah. But, but yeah, no, 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 nothing. Okay, cool. So then how did you get into, because obviously before you done uh, jewelry, you done property, right? Yeah, I was into property. Was there anything before you done property or? No. It was basically just. Yeah, so basically, um, I don't, I don't want to give this person too much attention, but my ex-girlfriend's nan gave me what you call a non-refundable gift deposit. Mm -hmm. I was 17 and that's how I bought my, first property. I bought an apartment in Nottingham and how I got into property is I used to watch Homes Under the Hammer and I used to think, this program can't be real. What do you mean someone buys a house in Manchester for 70 quid, 70 grand, yeah. spends 10 bags on it, sells it for a hundred yeah. and goes again. But you know what? I like new builds. I'm seeing everything, I'm seeing this. I was you know, watching other bits and bobs on uh, YouTube and things, how you can buy an off plan development, for say 100K 
once it's built, you can sell it for 120K or you can keep it and rent it out for like eight bills a month and your mortgage is four bills a month. So I'm like, cool, we try that. <laughs> it was funny enough, I had a meeting with the guys in Canary Wharf. It was a finesse, long story cut short. Like they basically made out, they're giving you 25% discount, all this stuff. So I, I was, thought I was getting like a 130K apartment for like 95K. No way. Really the apartment was all only worth 135K. There was no discount on it. <laughs> and then it was mad because you had to basically, you, it was like you bought it in two sections. So you put a 10% deposit down. Yeah. And then once it's built, they set it for you and you get your drink. Now, this is where the scam kicked in. They were quite smart to be fair. They were doing this years ago, what? I'm 35, I bought that when I was like 17, 18. Mm -hmm. So I'm going back like 16, 17 years ago. Yeah, yeah. They literally rang me and said, oh, every apartment building is sold apart from yours. Bear in mind, I had the top floor of the fake penthouse. Yeah, yeah. My one hasn't sold. So basically you've got to buy your own apartment again. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I had to put down another 10% deposit and ended up buying it myself. Does that make sense? Kind of. So basically you only put down 10% as the, you buy the you buy the land for them to de develop on. Yeah. Once the, la once the property is built, they set it for you, take their fee and give you back the profit what they sold the property for. Okay, so you're kind of buying the contract yeah. and they will technically sell the contract for yeah. you, like the right to buy it. Exactly that. But then they said it didn't sell, so My then you had to sell. put more money. So I had to put in more money. Okay, that makes sense. The house is still there now. I reckon the house is probably worth 70 grand. <laughs> And like, it's probably like 90 grand on the mortgage. Yeah. So um, yeah, that was my first run in with property mm -hmm. disaster. But at the time on, on paper, other, other than when I had to put down more money on paper where interest rates were so low and I had an interest rate, interest only mortgage. Mm -hmm. Like my, my mortgage was like two bills a month and the rent was like seven bills a month. Mm -hmm. So I was working for years that it was making a living. But obviously I just never got it valued. I never dug deep into it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, um, so I, Went uh, under the homes, under the hammer route. Um, I bought a free bed in Sheffield. I remember it like yesterday. I bought that in 2008, just before the crash. I was gonna say, when you said 16 years ago, I was thinking it's like 2007, 2008. So I bought this house thinking, oh, I've got the belly here. It was on the market for like 80K. I put her offer in at 65K. It got accepted. And I remember, it used to be funny, cause I'd go there, I'm like, I'm 18, 19 years old. I'm viewing the property. I'm bringing my little cottony white builder mate with me. <laughs> like, and I'm like, Rob, is it all good? Is it sweet? Yeah, a bit of this, a bit of that. It'd be all right, 10, 15 quid. We're laughing. Yeah. And the woman would literally look at me. I remember I used to get turned away from some properties. Like I'd put my offer in and they'd say like, come on mate, you're, you're a teenager. Like, yeah. What are you talking about? But yeah, long story cut short, bought a house in Sheffield. Um, yeah, like I said, I put her offer in for 65K. I think it was up for 90K. I got it, spent 10 quid on it. Uh, that was another situation where the mortgage was cheap, interest only mortgages. I don't recommend them to anyone, but that's another story. Mm -hmm. And uh, was making a living from that. I sold that just before Corona. Mm -hmm. um, and then my third property, obviously I'll get into my friends and how I know my friends and what my friends mean to me shortly. Mm -hmm. But I bought a, a house with Danny. Um, we were like 19 now, oh, definitely not 20. We bought. I, we bought it in 2009, so however long ago that was. Yeah. Um, long story cut short, I was on my estate and I see one of my long, long, long friends and like she seemed a bit upset and I didn't get what she was upset about. And she was uh, basically like, oh, my mum's gonna lose the house. Basically it was a very do well family on the estate. Like they were the only people out of like 200, 150 flats who owned their flat. Mm -hmm. And um, she basically said, oh, my mum's gonna lose the property. And I was like, oh, like, I buy houses, like, what's the situation? She basically said, oh, she owes like 50 grand on the mortgage. They're gonna repossess us. They're gonna kick us out unless she pays the mortgage off, da, 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 da. So there's me be like being Charlie Big Potatoes. I'm like, I'll buy it. And uh, I never forget, got it valued at uh, 90 grand. She uh, owed 50. So I said, look, you can clear your debts and you've got 40 grand to walk away with. And I kind of knew the house was the belly in the back of my head. Mm -hmm. And me and Danny basically said like, you can live in it for free for two years. And um, that was, so she lived in it for two years. Then me and Dan rented it out, got a good return from that. And then we sold, don't want to talk figures, but we earned decent money. Yeah. And that was my, and then basically Danny, 
went into the property industry with his profit. So I think we sold that in 2014. Mm -hmm. And you can see what he flipped that into. Obviously, we'll get into that later. Yeah. And then I took my profits and I continued to be a property investor, doing my homes under the hammer nonsense, mm -hmm. buying houses for 25, 30 grand, spending 10 grand on them, renting them out. Absolute nightmare. Worst thing I've ever done. Why? Basically, I'll be honest with you, Danny used to tell me all the time, like, bro, property's dead, property's dead. You can make more money doing other things. I know it like sounds good on paper, oh, you're 21, 22 with five, seven, eight houses, but you're not getting an income, you're not getting a return. And I, and he was right, I wasn't. So basically what would happen is you'd renovate the house, where the market up there is so different. The house could be empty for a month, two months. Mm. You get damp, no one's living in it. They're crap houses, bro. They're like yeah. little townhouses, what no one's lived in for four years with a satellite dish older than me nan. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So um, there'd be one thing after the other. I had cowboy builders in there painting over damp. So when I come to visit the house, I'm thinking, oh, the house looks lovely. No, it's just painting over the damp. Really, it's black or underneath. Yeah, yeah. Tenants, you've got you know, alcoholics, you've got junkies, you've got single parents living in the house. Fair, fair enough, the house is a mortgage free. But you, you, your, you know, your plan is 400 pound a month. So, so in my head, my plan was 20 properties, 500 pound a month. You know, do you know what I mean? It's 10, 10, 12 bags a month. Yeah. On paper, it's a million pound. I can go to the bank and get anything I want. Yeah. That wasn't, it didn't work like that. It yeah, didn't work. Yeah. So um, I had properties, bro, empty for like two years, one year. It was like, it was a nightmare. And then like you say, it causes maintenance issues as well because there's no one living in the yeah. house. Yeah. Okay. And Basically, just before COVID, I kind of like, I'm a bit of a conspiracy guy. So I kind of thought the world's going to go into lockdown. We're going into a zombie eclipse. I don't want this house. Don't want this house. Don't want that house. Furthermore, you know what? I don't want none of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, spoke to my other business partner at the time who was involved in the property with me. And we basically sold everything. And I had a really good relationship with the auction house. And she basically done me a favor and said, Oliver, do you know what I'm going to go and do? I'm going to go and board up all your properties and I'm going to sell them sold as seen. And I didn't lose any money. I think I might have lost like five racks. Mm. If it wasn't for her, I could have lost maybe... A lot more. A lot more. <laughs> so that was my property journey. It wasn't a very successful one, but I was young. Yeah. And I tried. It didn't work. Will I go back to property in the future? Yeah. It's, it's safe, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's, it, there's a small yield to be there. And I think, but now moving forward, I think it's more developing than investing if I was ever to go back into that field. Yeah, okay, I get you. So that took you from like 2007 to COVID, 2020? Well, well, I moved abroad. Okay. Uh, I lived abroad from 2017 to 2019. That was another thing that was difficult, getting my properties managed by estate agents who don't really give a shit. Mm -hmm. They know you're abroad, they don't really care. But yeah, I just went abroad for two years. I just wanted to kind of get away from London, get away from certain situations. So I went and chilled for a couple of years, literally done nothing. Um, my dad's retired, my dad lives abroad as well. So I just went and chilled with him, literally smoked weed and sat on a beach and ate Traded seafood. crypto. Ah, yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about that yeah, later. we'll talk about that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so basically, um, yeah, that was the, so basically, yeah, I, I, the last time I bought a house was probably like, yeah, 2017, I haven't bought a house since 2017 and sold them all 2020. Okay, cool. So then 2020, is that when you got into watches? So the watch journey, it's a bit of a funny one really because I've had a watch since about 14, 15, without mm -hmm. something like a little spoiled brat. Uh, the first watch my dad bought me was a, a Cartier tank on a brown leather strap, yellow gold, like an old man's watch, but at 15, 16, I thought, Cartier, I, was the, yeah, 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 I, thought I was the man, do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. I lost it, sorry dad. <laughs> I lost it outside what you would know as Bridge Bar, but for my generation, it was called Langtrees. Okay. And I was getting chased by uh, two fat boys because I was a Larry little prick and two fat boys wanted to bash me up and I was running and I'd, the watch unfortunately fell off. It fell off? Fell off and I weren't going back to, well, I, I was drunk, so I didn't know it fell off till I got in the cab. But yeah, oh. now you know dad where that was. <laughs> and then when I was 18, uh, basically so got a really like, close, tight friendship circle, which I'll get into that later. But, um, so we all kind of went and bought the same watch at the same sort of time from the same jeweler. Shout out Rankins, Bethnal Green Road. Those who are old school will know about that. They're not there anymore, they're only online now, but they were like probably the biggest jeweler. They was opposite Trotters, so them and Trotters were probably the, the biggest jewelers in London at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, my first watch was a 
36 mil date just I had iced out shoulders iced out bezel iced out dial we all had the same watch like five six of us we all went and bought the same watch that was like all of our like trophy and um so I've had yes yeah, so I've been into watches from like a young young age mm -hmm. but like yeah started taking it seriously probably about yeah two years ago and how did that happen how did you get into taking it seriously like who um, showed you the ropes all right so I'm just gonna so like I said yeah so basically my friendship circle so I've had the same friends from I was like 14, 15, um, I have got a few new friends and, but I've had the same friendship circle. So like, I've kind of been blessed with friends. So I'm gonna, so how, I mean, let's address this now. So a lot of people like, don't wanna say haters, but there's probably a lot of haters and a lot of people who question my loyal, my, my like, my, is the, what's the word? Like my loyalty, loyalty yeah. and like the respect and how much I talk about Danny. I've already mentioned him like four times, been talking for five minutes. So basically I've known Danny since I was like 14, 15. So it's like 19, 20 years I've been friends with him. He got into the jewelry industry probably about 2014, 2013. Mm -hmm. Opened his first shop in Bromley in 2016, 2017. I near Nando's, right? Yeah, was, yeah, 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 opposite Boots, next yeah, to Nando's. Yeah. And uh, that was called Winston's and uh, so basically, let me go, let me just go from like a bit at the beginning to my, why I've got a lot of you for Dan. So basically I've been through a lot, I've had a lot of ups and downs, had a lot of like dramas, a lot of losses, a lot of wins. And basically Danny's just always had my back in it, always been there for me. Mm -hmm. um, I've got another best friend called Pedro. Like if you know me, you know Pedro. I've got another brother called Dre, but, I, but like, it's like Dre's my brother who I don't really see every day, but that's my bro. Mm -hmm. And then Pedro is like my best friend. Like that's my, that's my guy. And then Danny's like that, that three in one, do you know what I mean? Like best friend, brother, mentor, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? And basically when I was going through what I was going through, he'd always have, man's, have my back. So, that's that's my reason why when people ask like I like get weird DMs, bro. Like, get, it's like someone messaged me the other day about sorry to go off subject, but it's on subject. Yeah, man. they wanted a watch. It was like, yo, bro, can I put some peas down on a watch? I'm like, yeah, bro. He was, a, he was like, it's a friend of a friend. Do you know what I mean? And I was like, yeah, bro, no problem, cool. Like, you know, he was like, oh, I want a Wimbledon. Can I put down like five bags and like pay off the other like seven, eight bags in a couple months? I'm like, a couple months is pushing it, but we'll work something out. I don't really think he liked my answer when I was like, oh, we'll work something out. So like the next day he must have replied to my story. I must have put a story up like, uh, Heady won the drop Martin sofa. And I put a like, story up of me in the sofa in the secret garden. I was like, right, if it weren't for Dan, I would have been back on Martin's sofa. I'll let the people know what I mean yeah, yeah. by that. And the guy replied like, bro, why are you so far up Danny's ass? Like your own boss. I swear I remember you being your own boss. I'm like, bro, it's a lot of people in this era don't respect or appreciate p p things, what people have done for them. Mm -hmm. And I'm very like open. Like I said, I'm dull in it, I'm emotional. And like, I didn't need to explain all this to him, but it's like, you don't know what Dan's done for me. Dan's put me in a situation where I can print money, halal money. He's my Muslim brother. Mm. I've known him 15, 20 years. He's put me on. Of course, I'm gonna show gratitude. Of course, I'm gonna be grateful. So back to basically what I was saying. So how I got into the industry. So Dan had a shop in Bromley. I was just like always in there chilling. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, I've always had a bit of like an Instagram presence. So like- Mr. Novikov. Yeah, <laughs> before Mr. Novikov, it was ring, ring, trap. <laughs> Cringe, allow me, I know, I'm sorry. And I'd oh. go in the shop, obviously like swag, kettle, like, yo, Dan, I'm putting two Cubans on, put a couple chains on, driving rentals. And like people would be like, oh, yo, bro, is that available? Like, yeah, bro, like I'm at the shop in Bromley, meet me. And I'd do like the odd deal there, do you know yeah. what I'm saying? And then, uh, when Dan moved to Hatton, he basically was like, look, doll, you've been through some bits and bobs. Come, come up here, see how you get on, crack on. And he had a shop in uh, Brighton. He had another venture because Danny basically does, he has like a few business partners, a few different ventures that he does, mm -hmm. all in the jewelry industry, but as a silent partner. So he was like, look, go to Brighton, see how you get on. Literally started working in this Brighton shop. It wasn't busy, but it wasn't dead. But 
I've just got a bit, I've just got like the gift of the gab, innit? Like I just know how to talk. I can just chat shit for days, bro. Like I could literally sell fucking an Arab a camel. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like I'm good. I'm on some like Wolf of Wall Street shit. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like people literally come in this shop in Brighton, maybe with no intention to buy something. They're fucking leaving with something. Mm. You're, you're buying something. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So Dan was like, look, you're half good at this. Fuck this Brighton venture off. Come up to the garden. Mm -hmm. So when was this? So like two years ago. So like 2021. Yeah, yeah, two yeah. years ago. Yeah, two years ago. Oh, do you know what? Not that I've skipped some, but for, for other idiots about, because I'm going to go back to Dan again, because that's my bro. What, the DM? Yeah, 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 I skipped some. So basically, I never used to like flying. Mm -hmm. Yeah? It's another reason why Dan's my bro. Yeah? He's probably going to watch this cringing and be like, doll, why have you said all this stuff? But I don't care. <laughs> yeah? He rings me. Yo, bro. I'm at the Brighton shop. I'm working. Yo, bro. Yeah. Find out if Lily can cover for you all next week. That's the girl who used to work as well. I was like, why? What's going on? He's like, we come in Marbella. We got the jet. I don't like flying. I don't like planes. Yeah. This nigga just rang me and said, you're going on a private jet. <laughs> cool. What other friends you know is going to put you on a jet? You ain't got to pay this. It's like, we're talking like 25 bag flight. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Now, I travel around the world, bro. And I had a serious, serious fear of flying. Like I'm talking like, I went to Jamaica when I was a kid and had a very, very bad experience on the plane. I was like 12, 13, mm. told my nan, told my mum, told my dad, I'm done with this shit. Cool. I moved abroad for two years, but I drove there. I got a ferry there. I didn't really? fly. Yeah, I didn't fly there, bro. Oh, yeah? wow. I don't do planes. Now look, bro, I travel around the world sending kettles, bro. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Dubai. Every other day New you're York, flying. Like, do you know what I mean? Dubai, yeah. New York, Marbs, Ibiza. I was in Kuwait a little while ago. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Do you know what I'm saying? So like, that's another reason why I got love for my boy. Got me out of a fear, got me traveling the world, doing what I like, doing mm -hmm. what I love. Do you know what I'm saying? He's Muslim now, alhamdulillah, you know? We'll talk about religion later. Yeah, yeah. As a Muslim, you have to visit a place called Mecca and Medina. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I've been Muslim for 17 years. I've never been Mecca and Medina for a few reasons. I don't like flying and I'm on this like, you need halal money to go there. I've been Mecca, bro. I've been Medina, bro. Mm. Who was I in Mecca and Medina with, bro? Danny. Cool, that's enough for Dan. That's how I got the job. Cool. You're, a, you're a good with your words, you know how to hustle, you know how to break deals, you love watches, you've always wore watches as a kid. Crack on, come up. And uh, yeah, that's how I become a jeweler. Cool, now you're here. Yeah. <laughs> cool, so now going on to, to watches then. A lot of people say if you spend 20 grand on a watch, like it's a waste of money. Yeah. You can tell the phone on, you can tell the time on your phone, sorry. Yeah. What are the actual benefits? Because even I was like this. Um, I bought my first Rolex from Dan, yeah. obviously before I met you. Date and Just. I, yeah, it was a Date Just Rhodium. Yeah. Uh, Jubilee. Yeah, Date Just 41. Yeah, yeah. Date Just 41. Diamond Dot or Batten? Uh, Batten. Yeah, yeah. I think it's still to this day, I think it's the best looking Rolly, but. I'm not going to yeah. get into that. Yeah. <laughs> you got way too much bread for that. That's your gym watch. Yeah. But um, cool. Yeah. What, what are the benefits for people watching this who think that, you know, luxury watches are a waste of money? What are the benefits of buying a luxury watch? All right. Cool. Who's that guy who's does this fake YouTube marketing and he's a multi gazillionaire, Imam Ghazi, whatever. Oh, Imam, Imam Ghazi, yeah. Yeah. He says it, he said it best. Whether he's genuine or not, whether he's a multi-gazillionaire as he makes out, but he said it best. If you're somewhere, you're wearing a Rolex, people are gonna respect you, people are gonna to wanna to talk to you. It's a way of networking, it's a way of building relationships. You wear a watch, I wear a watch, we must have something in common, let's have a chat, let's break bread. Mm -hmm. That's one way of, you know, I think he, I think he's making sense with that. Yeah. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Like, and then also it's an investment. Some people are terrible with money management. If they've got 20 bands sitting there, they're gonna spend that on nonsense you know on sushi trainers and some funky jeans where if you put 20 bands into a watch you hold that 20 bands for maybe a year or two you're going to make 10 percent a year depending on what watch you've bought mm -hmm. so watches are in my opinion solid investments and it makes people it sounds cringy and a bit muggy but if you're wearing a kettle you're wearing, what, what, you know depending on what watch you're wearing people are gonna know you're important people are gonna know you're somebody they're gonna want to talk to you mm -hmm. they're gonna want to build a relationship with you so yeah i think watches are good for networking and Strokes your ego, innit? Yeah, and you get to wear it. It looks good. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. So what pieces would you recommend for someone, say, 
I never bought a watch before. I'm yeah. coming to you. I want to buy my first watch. What kind of pieces would okay, you recommend? Yeah, I always recommend the watch you bought yourself, the Datejust 41 mm -hmm. as a start off watch, depending on your budget, but I always recommend you yeah, a Datejust. It doesn't really matter what bracelet, Oyster or Jubilee. Mm -hmm. It's a very nice watch for 10 bags. You can wear it every day. And it's a, yeah, it's a good start off watch. You know, it's the first watch that you should always have in your infantry. That's my opinion. Date Just 41. Date yeah. Just 41. Okay. And then obviously the level up from a Date Just 41, let's say you've already got a Date Just 41 or you don't want a Date Just, you want to spend a bit more. Mm -hmm. A Batman, like you're wearing yourself, yeah. or a Biometal Root Beer. I'd personally go with a Biometal Root Beer for reason being value for money. At the top, we were selling that watch at 24K. You can get one now for 17K. So mm -hmm. there's room to grow. It's an investment and you get a bit of rose gold and you've got a big face on your wrist. Okay. What about Submariners? Some people say Submariners. Um, Submariner, I think it's more for the older piece, sort of people, no disrespect. Like, I think that's a grown man, elegant gentleman's watch, yeah. like a nice stainless steel sub or uh, the new uh, 41 mil sub. Uh, we call it the bluesy, the blue kit. Mm. That's more of like a grown man, gentleman's watch. But yeah, once again, it's also a safe investment, but I don't really think a 24 year old wants to wear a sub. Yeah, okay, I get you. I remember talk, talking about first pieces. I remember I said to you on the way here, yeah, I yeah. bought my, uh, date just off Danny. I didn't wear it for a few days. Yeah, yeah. And it stopped ticking. Yeah, yeah. And I was calling my boy like, bro, I think I got sold a fake watch. Why does it stop ticking? Yeah, no battery. Yeah, no. It goes off your heartbeat and your yeah, blood. Yeah, exactly. Like your blood, you know, your blood. I don't want to, I'm not a doctor. I don't know what the word to use, but your circulation. Yeah. That's how the watch moves. Yeah, so yeah. Like, if you take it off for a few days, it will lose time. Yeah. That's why I've got a watch winder now. So yeah. yeah, that's well, the easy, yeah. <laughs> but okay, cool. So for people with bigger budgets then, what are the best kind of like investment pieces okay. right now? Because you call some... Amazing watch. I remember you told me to buy the John Mayer. Is that, that's the green. Yeah, should we get into the should we get into the first one? The the stainless Daytona? Do you wanna tell oh, me? No, let's not, do you wanna tell me that, that story? Here. No, no, no. Oh, we'll do a part that. two and we'll, we'll talk about you know, that. You know, you know, oh no, you can tell it if you want. Alright, so long story cut short. I told you to buy this stainless steel white dog Daytona. At the time, what was the price? Twenty one. Twenty one, yeah. Twenty one. You then told me you found someone who's got it No, 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 I got in my car, yeah. I was on my way yeah, on to way you. To, yeah, he's on the way to me. To come and collect it. And, and we wasn't super tight then. Yeah, it was It was early days. <laughs> it was early days. But I was in my car, Yeah, he was coming to, to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you finished it. I found one for 18 bags, bro. I found one for 18 bags, bro. I'm like, bro, it's not possible. If you found one for 18 bags, I'll buy five. Yeah. Long story cut short, your friend let you down. You didn't get one for 18 bags. The watch went up to like 27K. Like the next week as well? The next week. And I've seen in front of my face. Yeah. Yeah. This was 22. It was around my birthday. It was February 2022. And then a couple months later, I bought this. And I remember throwing that in your face like, bro, mm. you effed up. Yeah. So, regarding people with a bigger budget who have already got experience with watches or they're looking to spend a bit more and they want something better than a date just or, like I said, a buy metal root beer. Um, like you said, the John Mayer, the Green Daytona. Mm -hmm. October 2021, that watch was like 110 quid, 120 quid. It's dropped down significantly. We'll talk about why the market crashed, in my opinion, and why things dropped. Um, yeah, now you can get one for like 70, 75 bags. Will it go back to 110, 120? I'm not sure. Will it go back to a one -off? I believe so, yes, based on it being discontinued. Yeah, it's, been, it's done. Rolex yeah. ain't making no more of that. So I think once the market gets rid of all the liquid and everyone gets rid of them, there's going to be more demand again. Because mm -hmm. right now, there's loads of them, there's loads of supplies and I was really interested. But once these ones go, I think it will go back up to 100K. 110, 120 pushing it, but eventually it will go back up to 100K just based on it's being discontinued and there won't be many of them around and there's none being made. Mm -hmm. So I think that's definitely one on the list. The Platinum Daytona, that's just been discontinued. Um, they were like, the baguette one was like 140s, you know, the plain one was like 110, 120s. Right now you can pick one of them up, you know, for 90 to 100. Mm. Great investment, serious watch. Like that is the boss of all bosses. It's got like a mad brown ceramic. You know what? Like, it's got the mad brown yeah, yeah. bezel. It's got a big get baby blue dial. Like it's platinum. It's heavy. You you wearing that watch? You're important. Like, yeah. That's a grown man thing. So I definitely have that up on there. And also one of my personal favorites, man. The, the olive, the day day olive. Yeah, it's the like 60th them. anniversary. We were selling them for 70 grand. You know, and. uh can get one now for like 45 bags mm. do you know what i mean so that's what i'd say for the you know the more bigger pieces the more special pieces that's what i'd buy as an investment and something that looks sick yeah the olive the platinum daytona and the john mayer daytona okay what, what about other brands so like patek um, uh, ap so I'm, I'm gonna be honest i'm not really like 
got much experience in Pateks. I'm not sold many Pateks. My personal favorite Patek is the Rose Gold 5990. Which one's that? What does it look like? So that like basically that, it just looks like the Nautilus. Oh, okay. Just like yeah. the Nautilus. Um, serious, serious watch. You know what I'm saying? That's that, like, but like I said, I haven't really got much. That's more like Danny's field. Okay. I'm just like, I'm the Roly guy. I'm more like, stick to Roly, stick to what I know. And I'll let the, I'll let the other guys deal with the RMs and the, and the patties. APs. I, don't, I like APs, obviously, like I'm wearing an AP now, I'm wearing a two-tone bust-down Royal Oak. Yeah. Um, I like bust-downs. I think that might be like a bit of riffraff in me. Yeah. I like bust-downs. Um, I personally think the open back chrono AP, rose gold, blue dial, very nice watch. 85, 80 quid, depending on who you are. Mm. The closed back one, you get for like 65, 70 quid, considering that watch was 100K 18 months ago. Good investment. Um, my favorite watch is an AP Skelly stainless steel. Mm -hmm. I think it's like sick looking watch. What I mean by skeleton, like it's all open work. So you can see the front, you can see the back, you can mm -hmm. see all the movement. And I just think once again, that's another like bossy watch. If you're wearing like a stainless AP Skelly, like it's subtle, but at the same time, it's like, yo, this is what I'm working and with. If you know watches, you know, it's yeah, a serious that's, watch. That's, that's, that's my favorite watch. Do you prefer bust downs or plain Janes? Um, on a like serious note, obviously I prefer plain Janes. But I just like bust downs, like a bit of bling. Mm. I think it goes with my swag a little bit more, like. So yeah, but on a serious note, if I had the choice, obviously I would always choose a plain Jane, based on investments. A lot of people are under the illusion that like you lose fortunes and fortunes with bust downs, depending on what watch you bust down and how you bust it down and what quality diamonds you're using, who set it. You're not going to lose ridiculous money. Do I recommend you go and bust down a platinum day date? No. Do I recommend you go and bust down a olive? No. If you go and bust down a date just 41, you know, if you have it for two, three years, you're gonna break even. So you yeah. tell yourself, you know, you you, have, you haven't, you, it's not cost you nothing to wear a nice icy watch for two, three grand. Yeah. And me and you go to a club, I, Danny says this all the time. If me and Danny are out in a club, Danny could have a 300 grand RM on. I could have a flipping 15 yeah, grand date just on. And everyone looks at the date just. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? No one understands. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, in the grand scheme of things, of course I prefer plain Janes, but on an every day to day, -to -day basis, I normally have a bust down on. Especially for girls. When girls see a bust down, they, they think it's like 200 grand. Clowns. But... <laughs> Clowns. Oh, that's hilarious. Hublot. I've always wondered this. Why does everyone talk shit about Hublot? Because when I wanted to buy my first watch, I was actually looking at Hublot instead of a, instead of what I bought from, from Danny. But everyone's telling me, no, don't buy it. Thank God you didn't. Yeah, but why? Why is it so expensive if it's so bad? Um, basically, they released way too much. They say this thing's a limited edition, limited to this much pieces. They might release 2,000 pieces of it, so it's not exactly limited edition. Yeah. They give crazy, crazy discount in their boutiques. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You can't go to Roly and get 10% off. You can't go to Roly and get, you can't go to Roly and get a coffee. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Let alone a watch. They might give you a fucking 26 mil date just for your nan. Yeah. yeah? So the waiting list, as you know, is crazy, you know? But the waiting list isn't even real, is it? No. I'm they just, just sell to who they want. Yeah. They, they take your name. You see the thing what Nico said, yeah. It's, yeah. It's hitting now on the head, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Depending on your description. Bro, they do background checks. Like, I'm banned from Roly. Really? Yeah. Why? Because I've got watch companies in my name. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So um, they won't deal with me. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, it's based on who you are, how you look. They do a background check. You know, a little CRB check, Google check. And if, 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 if they want you wearing their brand or not. That's why the resale market is so crazy because no one can get rollies from the AD. Mm. And if you do get things from the AD, so right. So just let me answer your question and then we'll go back to that. Um, but yeah, so regarding Hublot, they give crazy discounts at their boutique. So they might give some like weird guy from Hollywood a 100K watch for 50K. Okay. Straight away, that watch has lost 50% of its value. There's no demand for Hublot. I think everyone's clocked on the play like it's a load of crap. Like yeah. 12, 15 years ago, they were popping. 10 years ago, they were popping. You know, footballers were wearing them. Hublot, Big Bang. Mm. Like, now it's like, it's finished. But that's amazing. That's the main reason why Hublot doesn't hold their value because they give so much discount at their boutiques. Okay. So the resale value is nothing because someone's already got 50% off 100K watch. What's supposed to be a limited edition, but they've made 4,000 pieces of it. It's not exactly limited, is it? Yeah. But yeah, like you said, at Rolex, they, they really don't care. No. <laughs> but what they're doing is now they're clocking that a lot of people, so like we're in an era now where everyone wants to be a jeweler. Mm. So everyone just thinks, oh, it's easy as this, you know? I just want to be a jeweler, bro. I get 100 DMs a month. How do I be a jeweler? Yeah. And so what Rolex are doing is now, Rolex are really starting to release pieces slowly. Absolute crap. 
they offer you like an Oyster Flex yellow gold sky dot over a black dial. What retails at say 28K. A jeweler like myself, I didn't want to give 23K for that. Mm. So you've got everyone thinking, oh, I've got the link at the AD or no, nah, do you know what? I'm going to buy this, bro. And then next week they're going to offer me this. It doesn't work like that. They're basically keep unloading all their crap on the average Joes. And the average Joes are thinking they can come to us to sell it and make a profit, not realizing you're going to lose a fortune. And that watch that Rolex will give you, we don't want it. And the whole reason why Rolex will give it to you because they even know it's trash. Yeah. So that's what's going on right now with the ADs. Okay. Because even when I went into the AD, the guy recognised me. He was like, oh, bro, I follow you on Insta. I've got my mum's watch. Yeah, I remember. And then he was like, yeah, I'm going to call you in two weeks because I wanted to get one for, for my dad as well. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, yeah, I just message him every now and then. In fact, I actually checked today. He's gone to Tiffany now. So the guy that I bought it from. At, left. Yeah, he's left. Yeah, so it's, it's like, got to start all over again yeah, trying to build a relationship. So. A but, you, but, but you're still beyond, like, their system. Yeah. Where you've bought one piece. You've still got, like, a 0.4% chance more than everyone else <laughs> great <laughs> okay cool um do you have any tips for people to get watches at at retail no there is no tips there's nothing you can do like you, you can't can do. unless you're a footballer you're, unless you're harry kane you're so you right. actually just need status you need status yeah okay if you've got status then you're wasting your time if you haven't got status yeah you're yeah, yeah, yeah you've got no chance okay cool that's fine um one thing as well i scratch my watch a lot yep yeah is it worth me getting it polished or on the house for you, Gio. <laughs> of course, but for people watching as well. Yes. If they scratch their watch, get it polished yeah. or just wait until you, you sell it. don't recommend get it polished every month, every two months. But yeah. Two, three polishes a year is fine. Brings back the watch brand new. Doesn't damage the watch. It's all good. Okay, cool. Now, watches you like, aside from investment pieces, just your personal preference. If you could only have five watches for the rest of your life, what's your top five? Whew. All brands, not just Rolly. That's a good question. Um... So I'd have a Patek 5990 Rose. Uh, I'd have an AP Skelly, uh, stainless. Uh, I'd have a Platinum Daytona. Uh, AP Skelly, RM Bubba, Patek 5990, Platinum Daytona. If not, I'd throw an Olive in there as well, why not? Olive, what, Rose Gold? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. And the question you always ask people on uh, TikTok, what's the most expensive watch you've uh, ever sold? Um, what is the most expensive watch I've ever sold? Expensivist. That's my, I made <laughs> That's that your up. word. Yeah, word. Yeah. I made it up. People get at me in the comments. I'm like, bro, I know it's not a real word. <laughs> um, basically, I had a customer, don't know if this counts, but I had a customer who come and spent like, like buck 60 in one day. Like, so we bought a, uh, Shout out Joey. He bought um, AP, Rose Gold AP, Black Dial, Chocolate uh, Dweller, and uh, Stainless Ceramic Daytona. So that's like, probably like what I've sold in, like, to one person in mm -hmm. one hit. Like yeah, He spent like a buck 50, buck 60. But the most expensive is watch I've ever sold. Do you know where I said I stick to Rollies? Uh, it's probably a green Daytona, bro. Yeah. Yeah, probably a green day tunnel at the top when they were like 120. Okay. At the top? Yeah, at the top. Like, yeah, 120. That's probably the most expensive watch I've sold, being honest. Okay, cool. And what's the most overrated watch, do you think? Do you know it's going to sound contradicting, but at the moment, it's probably the green day tunnel. Oh, really? Yeah, it's probably the most overrated watch at the moment, yeah. Why? Because of the hype? Because it's just been discontinued? Yeah, yeah. And everyone like thinks now it's going to be yeah, 110, yeah. 120, but that could take years. Yeah. So that's probably the most. What about looks wise? Because that's, that's a beautiful watch. Like looks, looks wise, wise what's, what do you think is the most overrated? I don't know because I think like where I'm actually like into watches, I think a lot of watches are actually like beautiful. Do you know what I mean? So if we're going to talk about watches that look overrated, we're just going to go back to Hubler. I think uh -huh. they're just all ugly and <laughs> shit. Do you know what I mean? I don't like some of the bigger APs. You know, like there's like a Michael Schumacher AP, mm. some like Arnold Schwarzenegger Terminator 17 looking <laughs> AP. I don't not really into them, but. I don't really think there's much like overrated. Look, there's some RMs what are ugly. Mm. There's some RMs what are ugly. Um, but no, I think like yeah, I think like most watches that like, I'm not just saying it where I'm in the industry, but I think most watches are generally nice. That like, what do you think? Like what do you do? You know what I mean? I by think that? Yacht, I think Yacht Master's ugly. Like you know the is it Yacht Master's the it's got like a white dial blue on it. I, can't, I think it's Yacht Master's big. Is it oh, Master's? Yeah, like, you, you, mean, you mean a sea dweller? Is it Seedweller? Yeah, that don't even come into my head, bro. Oh, so that's junk. I think they're ugly. Yeah, I, 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 bro, 
that watch is so irrelevant to me. I didn't even think about it. Yeah, the seed with a James Cameron. You don't sell any of them? Do you know what? They're actually doing well at the moment. Oh, really? Yeah, it's crazy. There's actually a demand for them. Um, so basically a Pacific one, the James Cameron version, Seed Dweller. It's basically like, bro, it's so big. It's got like a gas valve, bro. Yeah, I don't, I don't like yeah. that. Yeah, do you know what? I didn't even think of that, bro. <laughs> I actually got a video where I'm like, this is an ugly watch. I yeah. actually have a video of it. Oh, I'll show you the video. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't even think of that, bro. Yeah, that watch is vile. Yeah. yeah. But apart from that, I kind of agree. I think they're all, all nice. They're all all right. Cool. So in terms of the market right now, obviously everything's dropped a bit. Do you think now's a good time to buy? You were saying the other day, Things are starting to pick up. Should I tell you what on? I compare it to? What, crypto? Yeah. <laughs> so it seems like they're correlated because we had a little bounce in crypto. So that what I compare it to is, right? March 2020, COVID crash. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin went down to 3K. It's dead. So everyone fought. What happened? All time high. Yeah. A year and a half later. So every watch dropped. Yeah. All the scared money are like, watches are done. Watches are finished. How, bro? They're a commodity. They're an investment. Mm. Things have bounces. If you know financial situations, things go up, things come down. Yeah, yeah. So think of everyone who bought crypto in March 2020. Think of everyone, apart from myself, who bought property in 2008. You know the saying, right? Yeah. Millionaires are made from recessions. Yeah, yeah, it's true. So we've had, we're, we're bouncing back now. A root beer was dropped down to 30 bags. It's 35 bags now. If you would have bought root beer and it were 30 bags, you would have made, you'd have been five what, bags the up. Full, full rose root beer. Full, full rose, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. The GMT Master 2, the root beer, it literally gone up five bags. Yeah. The olive dropped down to like 32, 33 bags. Mm -hmm. 35 bags. What are they now? 44, 45 bags. Mm. So you've not missed the jump, but there's already been a, been a big jump from the bottom. So yeah, I think it's a great time to buy it. There's a lot of room for these watches to grow, but you can't. You need to get that flipper mentality out of your head, because mm. this is the problem. Like I said, everyone wants to be jewelers, so that's like you seem to think that you can buy a watch for 42, 43 quid and come and sell it in two months' time and make three bags. It doesn't work like that. Mm. They're investments. Investments doesn't happen overnight unless you're on Pancake Swap. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that, that's that's my opinion. Yeah, great time to buy. I'm not just saying that because I'm a watch dealer. I just think it's a bit of common sense. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Look at the Batman. The Batman was like 18, 19K at the top. You can now buy one for 14K. So yeah. 20, 30% return if you are patient. Yeah, yeah. If it goes back to some high, I bought mine at the top. So I'm yeah, hoping it goes back top. up. I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> and for everyone who's asking me how to be a jeweler, what advice have I got? Secret Garden is selling a course for 20 bags. I look at watches like commodities. Yeah. You're a trader. You charge for your services. Yeah. People who sell, you know, goods, sell items. They sell courses, drop shipping courses. They sell their courses. Why should we give the recipe and give the game for free? No, I 100% agree. You know how I feel about that. A lot of people, yeah. they look at the cost of it, but they don't see the value. Correct. And correct me if I'm wrong, it's 20K for yeah, your 20K. services. Yeah. yeah. So 20K. And for some people, they think that's a lot of money, but in your game, there's a lot of money to be made, right? Yeah. People can make that back in a month, two months, three months. If you hit yeah, the, yeah, yeah, if, yeah. You, if you do the right things, and right? You get, and you get to be with us in the secret garden once a week. Yeah. You get access to the trade groups. What I mean by a trade group is you get watches for trade price. Mm. So we're not going to talk margins and percentages. Yeah. But you get watches for what other watch dealers get. So there's room for you to make profit. All you need to do is build your Instagram, which will help you do. Remember, everything's lifestyle, bro. Yeah. Someone sees you in a nice car with a nice watch, eating nice food, they want to buy a watch. Yeah. So all you need to do is market yourself properly, but we're going to give you the main recipe, which is access to the stock, our stock. You get access to our stock. So you can sell our stock and get our stock for what? For trade price. So they don't even need money themselves no. to put up, to no. buy the stock. They can just sell your stuff. Yeah. Okay. Do you know what I mean? And get a profit, get a commission from selling our stock. It's a no brainer. Yeah, yeah. A kid messaged me the other day like, bro, I can buy a Sky Dweller instead of buying your course. Cool, you're going to go and buy a Sky Dweller for 20 bags. Then you've got to find someone to sell it to for a profit. You're buying a Sky Dweller for 20 bags, it's only worth 20 bags. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, bro, you already know that it makes sense to me. I think so, pe people have their priorities wrong. Like they want to spend £500 on a t-shirt, a, a shirt they'll do it. Or yeah. £500 at the club, no problem. But yeah. spend £500 on a course or whatever it is. Or yeah, or people go on holiday, they spend 10, 15 grand in Dubai, but then buy a course for 10, 15, 20 grand. No, it's not makes worth no it. Makes no sense, bro. Yeah. So no, I'm 100%, I'm a big uh, advocate of it. But also you need to be smart as well, right? Because in the last year, a lot of people have taken losses on on watches, yeah. right? Based on greed. But yeah, but based on based on greed, but also as a trader, like you're basically a, a watch trader, right? Yeah. So what's that side of it like? How do you guys 
Like me as a trader, I need Bro, to manage risk and stuff like that. What, once again, what do you guys do? I'm sorry, I'm gonna sound like an absolute what, Danny? Gem, but Danny, <laughs> see this shit coming and sold everything, bro. I'm talking, bro, like, I'm, I, I'm gonna say we didn't lose no money, but there might have been the odd watch. Like there's, there's one watch now that I can think of that we're stuck with. And that's like, it's not the end of the world. It's like a, a stainless steel, White Dial AP 15500 ST. I actually know what you're talking about. <laughs> we paid 32K for it. It's probably worth 30 grand. Yeah. That's the only watch, bro. Like Danny Seed has come in and sold all the big bits, all the Arabic TBRs, all the Platinum Daytonas, all the Platinum TBR Daytonas, like all the green Daytonas, all the olives, like sold at the top. Knew it was too good to be true. Mm. Like literally like, you know, you're saying to us boys, a sky the last week was 22 grand. How can it be 30 grand today? It makes no sense. Literally, it was like some Wolf of Wall Street shit. Dump the stock. Sold everything, bro. So coming back to the course, if somebody is paying 20K, yep. they're not only getting access to the groups and stuff, they're getting access to Danny's knowledge. Yep. So if there was part of your group, yep. they would have been told, they would have avoided that crash. Yeah. So I heard some horror stories, people losing bro, 50 grand here, no, 100 grand, six olives, figure losses. There's people who bought olives, Say you was a trader. Yeah. You didn't see this coming. You bought five olives at 60K because you could sell them on for 65K and they dropped down to 40 bags, 35 bags. Yeah. You just lost, do you know what I mean? You've got five of them. You just lost 30 quid each. What? You did the math, 150 quid. Yeah. Now you've got to sit on that till that goes back. Or you use your brain, you sell at the loss and buy stock at the bottom and flip your money back. Yeah. Yeah. People lost crazy money, bro. Crazy money. Yeah, see, that's that's mad, but that's what people are paying for, right? Is... Rose Gold AP was two was like two twenty at the top. It's one sixty today. But who told you to buy the top? Yeah, greed because people thought it was just going to keep on going, keep on yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like crypto <laughs> getting burnt. It's exactly the same as crypto. It's all supply and demand. Yeah, and and greed, like you're saying, yeah. people not willing to accept they're wrong, like holding losing trades. Mm -hmm. The same as holding watches that you paid a lot of money for and now they've gone down. You could sell, sell them it. and buy yeah. things that are in demand, yeah. but you're just sitting on it, yeah. hoping that it goes back up. Greed and arrogance. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Social media then, TikTok, obviously you, you're you big on TikTok now, you're making a lot of reels and stuff. Yeah. How did that start? Because you're the first person in the UK, I think anyway. Thank it you, was, bro. Yeah, it's the truth. Everyone's copying. Yeah, right? now everyone does yeah. it, but you yeah. were the first one yeah. to make the kind of content that that you make. So how, yeah. whose idea was it? Was it yours or? You're going to laugh again, isn't it? <laughs> well, I know the answer. That's yeah. what I'm asking. Yeah. So basically like, I've always been the joker and I've always been like the class clown. Yeah, yeah. Not that I went to school, but you get my drift. Yeah. yeah. Like, been the funny one. So basically one day we had a camera guy up there who was taking pictures for us. And then Dan just sprung on me like, Dole, go and talk about a root beer. I was like, what? Like, so like, I've got Asperger's syndrome, yeah? So like, I'm quite an awkward social person. Unless I know you, I'm comfortable, it's cool. Mm -hmm. But that like, takes me a little while to get into the swing of things. I used to hate the camera. I'm still not really like over keen on the camera, but I'm just used to it now. It's just part of my life now. Yeah. So basically, if you go back and watch the older videos, I'm literally like, hi, this is a root beer. It's 2020, it's 17 grand, and it comes with box and papers, and it's available today. Drop me a message. And where we were the first people to start doing it, no one was really like, bored of it or taking the piss out of it because no one was advertising watches in that way. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then a few other jewelers jumped on it and Dole was like, and, and Dan was like, Dole, look, you sound like a fucking robot, mate. Yeah. Like be your fucking self, live and up. So I just started like terrorizing people, brother, and asking them like what they're wearing. How much is that? That's a bit of shit. You're a peanut. You're like a giraffe. Why'd you wear that watch? And like, yeah, like now it's just like, yeah, the content just kind of comes natural. It's just kind of flowing, but literally that's how it started. And then now my boy, Charlie, he's my cameraman. That's my guy. Uh, he's, he's a lot of, he makes a lot of shit happen. Me and him has bounced back and forth ideas. We were called like two, three days a week. Mm. And like, just spare the moment, we just come up with shit. Like, do you know what I mean? I just come up with things. I'm like, right, fuck it, Charlie, let's get the camera out. I'm ready, let's go. Yeah. So, um, do you plan them or? A lot just, of them ain't planned. A lot of them like, let's go. Just put the boxing gloves yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I do in it. Like the secret garden brass, it's, it's the most craziest environment. It's literally like the Wolf of Wall Street, bro, <laughs> for watches. Like we're all friends, we're all cool. We crap bear jokes and we're good at our job. Like, and that's why I think secret garden gets so much love because of like a lot of other jewelers are arrogant. Mm. They don't have, they have bad customer service. 
you come up with us, you know what I mean? You have a laugh, merchandise, get a jump mic, get a hat, you know, yeah, what yeah. you spend, have a game of pool, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Have a laugh, you might get the boxing gloves put on and get yourself weighed in. <laughs> but like, it's a good vibe, innit? So, um, but yeah, regarding the TikTok and the, and, and the, the content, it was Dan's idea that said that one day, Dole, like I said, talk about a root beer. The video's got a bit robotic and a bit repetitive. Mm. And it was then it was like, Dole, man, just, just, just do your thing, mate. Just go and run around wild, bruv. <laughs> So yeah, that, that, that's, that's it basically. So me and Charlie just come up with the ideas. We just sit there together and say, right, let's do this, let's do that. Sometimes Charlie comes up with ideas. Sometimes I come up with the ideas. Sometimes we bounce back and forth together. And yeah, it's just like, what I've noticed is some days I come upstairs and I'm like, boy, it ain't working today because you can't force it. Mm. It can't be forced. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, without even saying like an idiot, like we're in the studio now, like the guy said, he recognized me. Imagine now if I said to you, I'll get that on camera. Like, what's he gonna say? Yeah. Like, oh, where do I know you from, bro? Like, Can you repeat that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cringe. Yeah, yeah. It's sore. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So a lot of it is this natural, this us being ourselves up there. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. But yeah, like it's going all right. What I've noticed is TikTok is for exposure. You no, know, getting your face out there. Sometimes it can be a good thing. Sometimes it can be a bad thing. But getting your face out there, getting exposure, and uh, Instagram brings in the sales. Like I've noticed, like since we've been doing the videos, yeah, the secret. So basically, look. You've got Trading Time, which is my boy, Billy. You've got Danny the Jeweler, which is obviously Dan. And you've got Secret Garden, which is the umbrella. Yeah. Then you've got my guy, Subway Sam, behind the scenes, who's like, Mr. Make It Happen. You don't know who that is, you'll never see him. Mm. But, you know? Yeah, yeah. He's like the the tripod, you know, he's the, whatever fucking you want to say, yeah? <laughs> yeah, I got what you mean. Keep shit together, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So Danny's always had a big clientele based on he's been in this from the beginning. So like a lot of these other jewelers, no disrespect to them, there's some sick jewelers out there, we'll get into that later, there's some really cool, dope jewelers. But Dan's foundation, been there from the jump, mm -hmm. and Billy's always been with Dan, with the sister company, Trading Time. So Secret Garden's the umbrella, does that make sense? Yeah. So the Secret Garden, there's Trading Time, and then there's Danny the Jeweler. So basically we're like, there's three of us, we're more of like, it's like, it's like a powerhouse. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's why I feel as well like, our prices can't be beaten because We've been in the game for long, so we know what to buy, how to buy. We know how to, you know what I mean? We know how to negotiate. We know how to get a deal. Yeah. So you've been seeing the videos. Like some people be like, bro, how did you do that? Or how did you sell that for that much? How did you buy that for that cheap? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? We, we kind of like, we know what we're, we, yeah, we know what we're doing. But yeah, so, the, so like, the content has brung a lot of sales in. But like I said, even before the content, sorry, I sometimes forget what I say. I chat so much fucking shit. Yes. <laughs> so the content has made the secret garden busier. But trading time and Danny the Jewel has always been the foundation. But what I've noticed where I control the secret garden, that's got a lot more busier since I've been doing more of the content. Like, for example, we're going to Amsterdam on Thursday, like two random guys just buzzed the buzzer and said like, yo bro, like, we're here on a business meeting. Um, we just left our meeting and a friend showed us your Instagram page. We think you guys are dope. We want to buy two watches. Yeah. Like, cool. Like, so like random people you know, seeing the content, liking the content. Um, had a had a mother and son and yesterday bought a 26 mil date trust. They basically said, look, other jewelers have got the same watch. Don't get me wrong. They're a bit more expensive than you guys because we, we say our prices won't be beaten. Yeah. But they were like, we just wanted to come down for the experience. They come from Leicester. They're like, we just wanted to come and see you guys. You guys are all jokes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, you've got Danny's a white cockney Muslim. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> You've got flipping me jumping up and down like a madman. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like it's 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 people that actually just want to come there and see it. It's the experience. Yeah, yeah, the experience. I mean, you've been there yourself. Yeah, you yeah. Come there with pups. You know yeah, yeah. He loved it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, so yeah, man. But yeah, yeah. So the content's going well in a nutshell. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I I like the videos where you get the watches and you say what kind of person they're for. And I don't know if you remember, you done yeah. one, it was a two-tone sub with a yeah. blue face. Yeah, it's a yeah. typical estate agent watch. Yeah, typical estate agent I watch. was laughing because, you know, I used to be an estate agent, yeah, right? Yeah, when yeah. I was an estate agent, that was my dream watch. Yeah, yeah. So when I heard that, I was just creasing. That's funny. Cool, let's talk about crypto. Your journey in in crypto. Oh, mate. You got into crypto in 2017, right? Mm -hmm. And you got into that whole ICO bubble. I'll let you. Okay, cool. First of all, how did you find out about crypto? We're going to get into that. Yeah. 2015, don't want to say my friend's name. He's a very private person. He's done very well with crypto. Been in some heavy projects early. Drove past him one day, stopped, pulled over. Screw, what's going on, man? What's, 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 where's the money at? Where's the bag at? He just shouted, 
Bitcoin, boom, drove off. Mm-hmm. Yeah? I thought, fucking idiot. What the fuck's Bitcoin? Yeah, fucking Bitcoin. <laughs> Didn't think nothing of it. Two years later, I'm on the beach. I'm not buying no more property. I'm chilling. I'm like, how am I going to get to the bag? Were you in Tenerife at this point? Yeah. yeah. How am I going to continue this f- lifestyle that I live? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Novikov and stupid lifestyle, sh- dumb choices, which I regret. Yeah. Yeah. Going broke can bring you right down to earth. Just, just randomly mentioned that, yeah, because I got no shame in saying that I lost a lot of shit, lost my mind, lost a lot of shit. So like, I'm out there, yeah, I'm like, where am I going to get this next bag? Where does, where's this next 100 quid going to come from? Do you know what I mean? Mm. 100 bags, when I say quid, some people get a bit confused, <laughs> yeah? Where, where, you know, where's the next bag going to come from? So I'm like, I remember that idiot said Bitcoin. He's rich. Let me see what's happening with Bitcoin. So you, when was this in 2017? Was it like early 2017? I'm gonna tell you exactly when it was. I'm gonna say August 2017. Okay, so that was like right before everything went crazy. Cool. So listen, Bitcoin's like two bags. Yeah, I remember. Each like fifty dollars, hundred dollars. Yeah, something like that. I'm like, see, like I said, I've always had that entrepreneurship mindship, money mindship. I'm like, this coin's two quid. This coin was free seven years ago, you could mine it and get it yeah, for free. Yeah. It's done a 2,000 quadrillion X, a 10 pound would have made you a million. <laughs> I've missed the boat. What's the next Bitcoin? How do I find the new Bitcoin? So I'm on Google, YouTube for hours. I'm just getting loads of nonsense, loads of crap. I find this guy called Ian Bellino. Ian Bellino. Some of your followers might know who he is. Some of them don't. Quick introduction of Ian Bellino. He was the ICO GOAT. He used to basically score these new projects out of 100 and basically tell you how to get into them, how to invest in them. So now, the first video I watched him was a coin called Stratus. Coincidentally, bro, there's some guys from Chiselust. I don't want to say no names. They're from Chiselust. They're fucking gazillionaires. Well done. I know one of them personally. Hats off to you. You used to work in your dad's fucking chemist. Yeah? Cool. He said, if you would have put five grand into Stratus, you would now have one million pound. So I'm like, cool, ICOs, these are the future. Do you want to let the people know what ICOs are in case they don't know? Yeah, just initial coin offering. So basically uh, a project will come up with an idea and to raise the money for, to fund that idea and to make it an actual project, you can basically buy like a pre-sale. Um, and in 2017, ICOs were the biggest thing. So you'd send ETH to a random wallet address. They would promise you a certain amount of coins. And you were basically guaranteed to do 50x on most of them. Cool. Um, and yeah, Ian Bellina, I think he did a challenge where he turned 10k into like a mil or something yeah. like that, or 1k to a mil, yeah, yeah. just from ICOs. Yeah. Um, and everything was good. He was the, the, I'll let you finish, but he was the GOAT in 2017. Cool. Um, until about December, <laughs> January. <laughs> yeah. Found this, so basically the, the first thing was, is how the f- fuck do you buy crypto? Yeah. So can we talk about exchanges on here? Yeah, of course. Cool. So Coinbase. Yeah. Coinbase is only letting you buy a hundred dollars a day or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, fuck this shit. I'm gonna be the fucking next fucking gazillion it. I ain't done. I'm gonna do a hundred dollars. So I found Bitpanda. I remember Bitpanda. Bitpanda was letting you spend like fifteen hundred dollars a day. Yeah. Do you remember Bitilicious? No. Oh, that's on dodgy website, no. man. 2017. But so Bitpanda. So I said to my dad, one of my friends back home, everyone opened a Bitpanda account. Everyone buy five, six ETH. But we're not going to hold on to these five, six ETH. We're going to use these five, six ETH to get into these other projects. Yeah. To these pre-sales and these seed rounds. But now I need to work out how I send the ETH to these wallets. How do I do that? So from Bitpanda, I then discovered my Ether wallet, MEW. Yeah. Cool. So you'd buy your Ethereum from Bitpanda, send it to my Ether wallet, and then from my Ether wallet, you'd send it to the ICO contract address. Bro, when I sussed that, I thought I was a genius. <laughs> you feel like a coder. Bro. <laughs> when you first do it, I'm like, your... I'm walking on the beach, like, my shirt on down, like, <laughs> drinking, like, a pina colada mocktail, like, oh, I'm into crypto now. <laughs> like, literally, like, like, it was crazy. Oh, don't kill me. And uh, so the first project that I'd done was Dragon Chain. I remember Dragon Chain. It was a Walt Disney backed blockchain. Whatever that means, I don't know. Bro, 
that shit done a hundred X out the gate. Yeah. ICO price was six cents and it went up to $6. I put one Ethereum in it. And Ethereum at this point was like $250, yeah? 25 bags, 25 grand yeah. in my Ether wallet. Yeah. Guess what, bro? What? I don't know how to sell it. I don't know how to sell oh, it. Cause you got the dragon chain in your my Ether wallet. Yeah. But you don't know how to send it to the exchange. Nah, bro, I don't have to sell it. Binance wasn't, Binance ain't even here. No, Bi the Binance was around, but it wasn't listed on it Binance. It was an ICO, bro. Yeah. Binance, BNB was an ICO, right? Uh, Binance was an ICO. Yeah, B BNB, yeah. but that coin wasn't listed on yeah, Binance at that point. It wasn't listed, bro, there was one exchange and I can't think of the name for the death of me what it was on. The exchange got hacked and then got took apart. I think it was uh, Cryptopia or um, Bittrex or something like that. It was, no, I can't remember what it was called. It was called something where it had a horrible interface. It was like a bastard, horrible looking exchange. That sound out of a fucking Game Boy. And uh, couldn't sell it, right? Couldn't sell it. So then anyway, 25 racks. It's there. It's not, the, market, the market ain't crashed yet. Yeah. We're cool. We're just fluctuating 22 to 25 bags. What's this like December 2017? Yeah, in December 2017, yeah. exactly that. Then I go again with Quant Stamp. Yeah? Quant Stamp, 10x out the gate. Cool. Then I buy a big bag of Neo. Yeah? 10x out the gate. Um, what other ICOs was I in? Bro, long story cut short, I turned 10 bags to 100 bags in two months. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Um, I want to say some other names, but I can't remember. Oh, T-Bar. Do you remember T-Bar? No, I don't remember T-Bar. T-Bar. My ICO price is $1, $12 at the gate. Yeah? All these projects, madness. My dad's like, son, sell them. I'm like, I don't know how. I know we're going to be gazillionaires. I'm not selling nothing, dad. These are going to... Dad... I remember ringing my mate, wallahi, ringing my mate and said, the only problem we're going to have is what colour our Lambos are going to be. <laughs> Sound like Wolf of Wall Street. And he was like, all right, bro. Yeah, i never forget it. Don't want to talk about this person too much, but uh, a friend of mine called Michael Cosgrove. Genius. Guy is a fucking the biggest dope genius you'll ever meet. On paper, he's a legend. If I met you, if, if I introduced you to him, you'd hire him. But there's no, what's the word? Execution. Okay. It's just ideas, man. Ideas, man. Yeah. These ideas are fucking amazing, bro. This guy was talking about OnlyFans before Andrew Tate was fucking doing webcams. Mm. This guy is just, bro, this guy is just a genius, bro. This guy will go to a boot sale, buy something for a pound and send it on eBay for nine pound and then not send you your item. Guy was a genius, yeah? Guy, biggest finesse I met, genius. He rang me and went, Dole, you're in crypto, ain't ya? That's how he talks a bit, he's not all there. Yeah. I was like, yeah, he was like, sell it all. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, it's a bubble. Do you remember the internet, uh, remember the internet crash, the internet bubble? You're about to go into a bubble. I've heard you done really well, sell it. I've gone, you're hating, bruv, shut up, man. You know nothing. Hung up the phone, bro, a month later, gone. Yeah. Wiped, gone. That, that crush was brutal. Gone. I remember. Gone, finished, done. Yeah. 100K, went back down to like 7K. Finished, done. But I'm like, everything's on sale. <laughs> Buy more. So everything what absolutely got annihilated, I threw a little a couple of pennies at, and that got annihilated more. But I don't know about cycles yet. Yeah. I don't, I'm, in my head, I'm playing this game on. Oh, if Dragon Chain goes back, I'm up again. If <laughs> I buy more Dragon Chain now, then it goes back to what it was. I've got my 25 bags back from 100X and another 10 bags. So I've just put another bag in and it's done a 10X. Yeah. I think Ian Bellino at that time was telling everyone to buy more as well. Dragon Chain, it's finished, it's done. Yeah, yeah, now. Obviously. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Every, all them coins are done. I didn't know that. I didn't know about cycles. I'm just thinking everything's going to come back. So now, I'm wiped out. But now Ian Bellino has come up with another project called Sparkstar. I should have known from when it said it was uh, a million tra transactions per second that the Ethereum killer, like everything is. That's a load of shit. But Ian Bellino's flew him out on a private jet. They've come and, you know, talked about the project, you know, gave him the whole like fucking whiteboard, this and that and all the crap. He scored it 91% out of 100. They, ra they raised 35 million in two days. I got in seed round. So 
like, look, there's 10 bags. All he's got to do is a 10X. Bear in mind, bro, I'm sorry, I forgot other projects. One chain. Well, I remember one chain. That was like March or April, though, wasn't yeah. it? Bro, Icon, done like a 300X. Yeah, yeah. All from this Ian Bellina clown. Yeah. So I'm like, all Sparks has got to do is a 10X. Got my 100 quid back. Yeah. I'm cool. Sparks was a rug. There was no project. It was like decentralized cloud. Anyone can build on it. They come up with like a fire alarm. Like you could build your own fire alarm. That was like, it was the biggest, to the piss out of us. Do you know what I mean? Mm. They've been taken to court now. I still get emails now. Like, no way. yeah, you can like, the SEC are like basically saying you get your money back. Like, a lot of shit. So, um, now I'm finished. I'm done. I'm rugged. So I'm like, oh, wow. But I can't give up on crypto. I'm too emotionally attached. That was like, I lived alone. I lived abroad for two years. All I knew was, Laptop, Telegram, crypto, ICO drops. When is this? This is like May 2017 probably now. No, I mean, you mean like May 2018? Uh, sorry, 2018, yeah, 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 2018, May 2018. yeah. 2018. So I can't give up on crypto, I can't. I'm like, this is, this, is, this, is, this has made millionaires from pennies. I can't give up on it, but it's broke my heart. <laughs> so I'm over it. I'm gonna come back to it, but yeah. I'm over it. I moved back to England, 2019. Someone tells me about futures, day trading. I'm like, bro, what do you mean? I can put $100 on Bitcoin to go up 10% with 50X leverage. So if Bitcoin goes up 10% with 50X leverage, five times my money, turn $100 to $500. He's like, yeah, bro. I'm not asking him, what about if it drops 10% though? I'm not asking that. I'm of course like that not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro. I mean, you have the conversation all the time, I crack jokes about it. I don't know chart patterns. I don't know what a dragonfly is, yeah? I don't know what graveyard shooting star is, yeah? I don't know about trend lines, yeah? I know about pressing buttons and making du'a, yeah? Cool. This shit's working. What, the future's trading? It's working. Pure luck. Mm. Pure luck. Remember, in my head, a 2% move, 50x leverage, is a double up, correct? Yeah, pretty much. Cool. It's working, it's working, it's working, it's working. Crypto's slowly starting to pump again. We're in 2020 now, so you do the maths. Mm -hmm. One day I'm in a Tezos long. I remember Tezos. Yeah, I'm in a Tezos long. I'm like a couple of bags margin on it. It's, 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 it's dropped like- What leverage are you using? Maybe like 20X now, I'm over this 50X shit, I'm okay. using 20X. But it's dropped 10%, I've been liquidated. It's the first time I've seen this email. So I'm like, oh, I've probably lost four, 500 pound. No, I've blown my account. Yeah. So I'm like, wow. Met this mentor, I'm not gonna say his name. Met this guy, took him for dinner. Me and my brother Dre, who I spoke about earlier, went for dinner with this guy. Basically gives out signals. His signals are working, he's showing proof. But instead of us being new, trying to be smart young traders using 5X leverage, we're going back to using 50X leverage because these trades are working, not realizing if this trade loses 2%, you're gonna get liquidated. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Got burnt again. So now I've got crypto depression. So I've missed DeFi. I've missed meme coins. I've missed DEXs. I've missed it all because I've got crypto depression. Yeah, yeah. I'm done, I'm fuming. So this is like what, 2021 20, now? Yeah, I've missed, I've missed Uniswap. Uniswap was an airdrop. Yeah. You, that got, was you got 20 racks for free. Mid 2020, yeah. I think. But I've got crypto depression. I yeah. I'm not interested, I don't wanna know. So then I've kind of crept back in, slowly crept back in. Like I said, I've got a good group of friends in it. I've got good friends around me. They've seen what I'm doing. They're like, doll, crack on. Let's get to the bag. Crack on. So I had this new strategy. High margin, low leverage. Mm -hmm. It's working. I made 50% in about a month return. That's amazing, that's great. Yeah. No bank in the world's gonna give you that. Yeah. So I'm gassed, I'm like, ah, we're back, we're back. There's gonna be another crash. Oh, so I skipped something, I missed, but I've got crypto depression, bro. I've missed the 2020 mad train. Yeah. Come on, bro. 
Phantom done a thousand X, bro. Oh, let's not talk about Phantom. I got in an ICO, bro. Let's not talk about that one. One grand would have been a million, bro. Mm. There's so much pain I'm missing. I'm forgetting some of the stories. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But I've missed the 2020 hype because I fucked up day trading. So there's no liquid for the 2020 hype. Yeah. Bro. I'm now think I'm doing well with this day trading. Once again, there's no strategy. I'm basing it on PA, price action. That's your favorite saying. My favorite saying, bro. Price action. Price action, bro. Bitcoin was 17 bags. Mm. It's now 16 bags. It's gonna go back to 17 bags. It's got to. Price action. XRP's at a 20% pump. It's gonna dump. Short it. Yeah? <laughs> bro, I'm in an XRP long. Huge margin. Elon Musk tweets, Tesla are taking Bitcoin off their sheet. Yeah. Instead of closing my position at a small loss, I'm just watching it get wrecked. Too emotionally attached to the trade. It's going to recover. It's going to recover. What leverage are you using? Yeah. 10x. 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 We're not going to say how much, but yeah, liquidated one day. Like, what? Including the 50% that you had made that month? Liquidated one day, I'm gone. Everything? I'm gone. So yeah, I'll never day trade again. Yeah. Expensive lesson, but a valuable good lesson because I've learned early. So I'm done with day trading. And obviously the strategy moving forward is new capital and uh, wait for the so-called bottom to come in, buy and hold. If I get a 3X, 4X, I'm just going to, well, I'm going to be taking a lot of advice from you. Do I decide to wait for a 10X? Do I take three, four X and run and find a new project? I don't know. But the plan is moving forward is no one gets the exact bottom, but try and find the bottom, invest five, six solid projects, put them on a ledger, leave it for a year. Hopefully Richard Hart can judge the top again <laughs> and uh, never look back. Roller coaster of emotions talking about crypto. I can see it. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> you have to get the vape out. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Cool. Let's talk about one thing that... Um, I know you put a lot of importance on your religion. Um, obviously, you weren't born Muslim. Nope, nope. Um, you reverted to Islam. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk a bit about that? Why you want to... Yeah, 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 yeah. What made you... Um, alhamdulillah. So, um, I, I was into conspiracy theories hard. Very, very, like, deep. Well, not deep. You, you, don't, you don't start off deep. Obviously, you start off basic shit, innit? 9-11, mm. Freemasons, Princess Diana... David Icke, yeah. Everyone's Lizards, The Matrix, S basically said a lot of this shit makes no sense. They definitely killed Diana. I don't know if I can say that. I don't want to get too much detail. Yeah. Um, Diana, 9-11. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Big conspiracies. There's obviously a, another entity or another world working behind closed doors, pulling the strings, controlling things. But guess what? There's got to be a God, because if they're worshipping the devil and they're doing all this devil worshipping stuff, there's got to be a God. So then got a bit deep into the whole Freemason situation. And then before Freemasons were called Freemasons, they were called Knights Templar of Solomon. Who was Solomon? Solomon was a prophet of God. All right, cool. Let's go back to God. Let's see what the crack is with God. It's like 2005 sort of times now. Um, I've jumped about eight years, by the way. I was in the conspiracies for eight years from like pyramids, aliens, Malachi Z. Hawk. Black Hebrew, black knowledge, black magic, all this crap. Mm. Yeah, absolute crap. Um, no disrespect to anyone, but all of the crap. Um, I would tell you like there's clouds of spaceships. I was in I was in some mad shit, like the Queen's a lizard and all this nonsense, yeah. And then um 2005, Islam was very big and predominant in the area where I was originally brought up, born and bred. And I had two cousins. One, both Muslim, one was practicing, one wasn't practicing. And it was like the cool thing to be Muslim. So me being always, being the cool kid and doing the opposite of what the crowd do. I'm like, guys, grand beards and wearing dresses. Like, what's all this about, cuz? Bruv, there's aliens everywhere, bruv. What are you not talking about? Allah. Like, what are you not on? It's like, cuz, you're, you're a guy who loves a book. You love a bit of knowledge. All that effort you put into conspiracy theories, Put into religion. I'm like, well, I'll tell you what, my nan's a Jew. So let me go and see what the Torah is saying. 
through your other conspiracy, my conspiracy background and conspiracy knowledge, you learn about prophets and other certain bits and bobs of religion. Mm. So in Christ, so in Christianity, obviously you've got Jesus. Muslims also believe in Jesus. So Jews don't believe in Jesus. So from my background of knowledge and seeking the truth, you come across Jesus in different interpretations and different forms. But this guy existed, man. The Jews reject him. Why did the Jews reject him? Without going into too much detail, you start doing research on who the Jews are, who the Jews are waiting for, what the Jews are upon. Not, not every Jew is bad, but the Zionist, you know, sort of Jews. So you're like, all right, cool. They're a bit off track. Second religion, what God revealed to us was Christianity. The Bible was written, not written, I shouldn't say that. The Bible was translated by King James. We have the King James version. Do a bit of research on who King James was. He was some weird pedo king with wooden teeth who couldn't talk and his tongue was always too big for his mouth so he'd slobber and dribble. William Shakespeare helped him translate it. William Shakespeare was a queer. I don't really want to take that translation. Let me see if I can find another Bible. Then you realise that the disciples who see Jesus and wrote a lot of the books in the Bible because the Bible was made of many books. I don't know if he was aware of that. It's not just one book, it's loads of books compiled into the one book yeah. in the Bible. So Matthew, James, John, Luke, all these guys, they've all got different opinions. They all, they all made mistakes. But if they all saw Jesus and all knew Jesus, why has they all got different opinions? Some say, you know, in this chapter, Joseph had 12 horses, but then in that chapter, Joseph had eight horses. There's too much, if it's the word of God, God doesn't make mistakes. There wouldn't be no contradictions. That makes sense. Yeah. But now I'm thinking, I'm gonna look into Islam now, but then I don't wanna get tarnished with that. I'm doing it for the cool brush or First people, first thing people ask you, was you, was you in jail? You've been to prison? It's the first thing they ask, mm. they are, you know, when you're Muslim. So the, long story cut short, I started learning about Islam, reading bits and bobs of the Quran. And I, I read a lot of like signs and science of the Quran and signs and science and some of the, there's things called hadith, which is sayings and actions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace be upon him. So I was like, how could this guy in the desert 1400 years ago talk about people having musical instruments on their head? How could this guy talk about women wanting to be like men and men wanting to be like women? How could this guy talk about people who live so close to each other, but they're distracted and don't talk to each other because they communicate and watch things from an upside down rug, from a, a round disc shape, I'm talking about a TV and a satellite dish. Mm. How does the Quran talk about how two rivers will meet, but there'll be a barrier. And if you look, there's two seas what don't touch each other, one's salt water and one's natural water. This has got to be from God, right? So I got indulged and indulged more into that. Then a lot of my conspiracy theories started falling into place with Islam. Like I said, Prophet Solomon, you learn about jinns, the word of, we call it the ghaib, the unseen. You start learning about things what I was into 10 years prior to this, aliens, you want to call it, you know, you start learning about magic, you know, Kabbalah and all this stuff. The Quran tells you all about this, warns you about all this and goes against all about this and refers to them as they and them and they, who are them and they, talking about Freemasons and all the other stuff I was into. So that, it kind of like put everything together for me and like put me at peace. So like, there is a God. There can only be one God, because if there was more than one God, the world wouldn't be created how it's created. Because if we look at the sky, if we look at the moon, we look at the sun, we look at the stars, we look at the planets. As much as the earth's corrupted, it's mad, but the way it's designed is perfect. Mm. Only one person would have done that because every other God would have had a different opinion. Does that make sense? Yeah. Then yeah. the Quran has been proven that it's not been changed. If you threw every single Quran away and burnt every single Quran, we'd have the same Quran back because people have memorized it. Cool. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, other people who are non-Muslim, claim this to be one of the best guys that ever walked the earth. Then you start learning about his characteristics, what he done, how he treated people, his mannerisms, his clerk, you know, his body language. This has got to be from God. This guy has got to be sent from God. Then I met people whose life has changed. You know, they were doing certain things on the road and they completely changed their life based on this religion. Not in a disrespectful way, I've never seen a Christian do that. Never seen a Jew completely change their life around. Never seen a Christian completely change their life around for the sake of God. So I was like, there's got to be some truth to this. Let me, let me keep on indulging, keep on indulging. And there was a point where I was like, I hit a brick wall, I couldn't deny it anymore. This is, this is the truth. 
Allah's given me a sign and I'm gonna take that sign. And a lot of your friends are Muslim now, right? Yeah, alhamdulillah, yeah. It's, yeah, a lot of us. Yeah, basically all my friends are Muslim, minus a few. And do you feel like it helped you get through certain situations? Like- Yeah, mental health. Because I know you're, you're big on your prayer and- Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even yeah, when yeah. you was at Mine the other day, you and Mo went yeah, to yeah, yeah, pray. Yeah. And, and, yeah. I, try not to miss, I try not to miss my five daily prayers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, bro, maybe we'll have to do a part two. I think we run out of time. But, um, <laughs> I told you I could talk for days. Yeah. <laughs> Where can people find you? Uh, the Secret Garden. Secret Garden Jewelers on Instagram. Secret Garden Jewelers on TikTok. Yeah. Uh, we're based in Hatton Garden. It's called the Secret Garden for a reason. Can't give our exact address, but yeah. Cool. Secret Garden. Well, bro, it's been a pleasure having you on. And uh, you having maybe me, we'll do a part two on there. Cool. Cool. Nice one. It's a wrap.